Hello, welcome to uh, Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to do a quick drive-by. It's a pen that I found in one of my boxes. Don't remember when I bought this or when I collected it. I could have bought it on Canal Street in New York City. I used to go down there occasionally. I did some research on this. Not a lot of information, certainly nothing pertaining to this particular model of a Newman pen. Just a plain cardboard box, very comparable. This should be a giveaway as to what this pen is all about. And this is one big pen. We're talking pretty big here. Oh, sorry about that, you got a little bit of condensation there because it is uh, quite humid here in the east coast of Pennsylvania, the United States in, uh, in August. No, nope, sorry, it's July, not August. Hopefully we can pick up. Uh, I really didn't know what to make of the pen, but it comes with instructions. And the instructions are quite good, both in Chinese and English. So this is a eyedropper pen. That was a giveaway with the little bulb that they gave you. And it has uh, a classic design, which uh, I think a lot of vintage pens have had. So let's take a look at this. Uh, just to unscrew cap. I mean, this thing is substantial. It's not really that heavy. I'll give you some uh, weights. But uh, that's a good size section. I mean, that's about as big a section as I have on any pen. It's bigger than the uh, <coughs> Delta Dolce Vita oversized. Interesting engraving on the nib. Now, that's something I've ever seen before. A nice two tone nib, obviously, on the fine side. And that's uh, interesting feed. The first time I've seen a feed with both uh, longitudinal and horizontal finning. So that's um, a little bit different. So what you would do with this pen is you would unscrew the section. It comes out uh, very easily. I lubricated these threads with silicone grease. When I got this pen, it was a little bit difficult to unscrew. And apparently, at some point in time in the distant past, I put ink into it. Uh, uh, hopefully, we can look inside of there. Nope, let me get my trusty LED. There's a piston rod in there. And that's controlled by the blind cap on the opposite end. Very nicely machined, unscrews. Again, I've silicone greased all these threads. And there's that piston, which fits in the back of the section. So when you're not using it, you screw the piston all the way in, and that seals off the ink flow. Very common design of this type of pen. So uh, again, this is a quick view. I'd, uh, I posted something on. Um, fountain pens on Google Plus and nobody knew what it was. So just for comparison's sake, I'm going to show you a few other pens. So here are four pens in comparison. Pelican M800, a Noodler's Ahab, a Jinhao 159, which is not a small pen, but it is dwarfed by the Newman. So let's just open these up. Interesting, they're both screw caps. And as you can see, the section, the nib, everything just uh, overpowers the 159. Makes it uh, a very unique pen. I like the fact that it uh, is pretty much, you know, hard rubber all the way around. I'm not a fan of the, of the metal bits. And uh, comparing it to the M800, it also dwarfs the M800 nib. So a unique pen. I appreciate any comments that you might have in regards to uh, what you think the pen might be, what history it is. I'm going to take it to the DC Pen Show and see what I find from the experts there. I'll let you know. So hopefully you enjoyed it. Had a little bit of editing issues there, but uh, we're here for the closing statements. So I have to just say, Newman. And those who might remember that TV show will understand what I'm saying. So that's it for a look at a very unique pen, at least uh, from my perspective. So uh, let me know what you think. So until later, um, have many good writing experiences. May you have many, may they be varied. You know, explore the world of pens and enjoy every minute of it. Bye.